Ciao a tutti, welcome to my channel. My name is Melanie and today we talk about digital art and how to start it. We're going to talk about what equipment you need as a beginner, especially when you're low budget, like I was. Things I wish I've known before I started and some final thoughts on digital art in general. First things first, you should know how to draw at least a little bit and I'm talking about traditionally pencil and paper because digital art is just another medium it's not the easy path to become a good artist it's another medium like painting with oil or painting with aquarelles or etc so my recommendation is if you don't know how to draw or know a little bit practice um, I'm going to put some YouTube videos in the description box which helped me when I found out that digital art is not that easy. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the equipment and let me get one thing clear right from the beginning. You don't need an iPad to start with digital art. <laughs> no. But don't get me wrong. It's an awesome device. I love my iPad. I use it for almost everything from drawing, graphic design, also organization <laughs> lately. Um, but you don't need it to start with digital art. If, for example, if you have a smartphone, you can also start with a smartphone. There are so many artists out there who draw on their smartphone only with their fingers. I don't know how and whatever. But if you're not so handy like me with the fingers on the touch screen, buy a stylus pen, which costs 30 euros, I think, 50 oh, I don't know the change at the moment, which is nothing compared to an iPad. <laughs> um, which leads me to the second option. If you have any other tablets at home, like Samsung, etc., you can use that always with a stylus pen and applications which are available for Android devices. They're not like Procreate, they're almost like Procreate, but at the end they're almost the same. The next point is graphic tablets. That's the way how I started my digital art pathway adventure. All you need is a computer and a graphic tablet. There are two types out there. One, it's like a screen, a gigantic touch screen, which is awesome and I'm saying too much awesome. Fantastic. But they're pretty expensive. Not like an iPad as always, but um, between 300 and 500 euros. So if you have a little bit of budget, buy this one because you really see your hand where it's drawing. The most, yeah, the, the, the cheaper version of a graphic tablet is this guy here. And I want to clear one thing. This video is not sponsored. It's just I want to show you alternatives if you want to start out with digital art. That's why I'm putting everything in the description box and showing you the brands. And the market here is Wacom, but I think that's a pronunciation. It's also expensive. I paid for this one 80 euros, which is nothing considering the size. At the size of a Wacom you pay almost the same, if not more. Um, yeah, and this guy helped me at the beginning. I still use him, her, it. Babe, I still use Babe <laughs> for my commissions, my single line art commissions. And it's pretty cool because it's wireless and also the stylus pen is wireless. And yeah, I'm going to put the link in the description box if you want to buy it. It's 8 euros, so if you can and if you don't have an, a tablet or don't want to use your smartphone, that's a pretty good alternative. What programs to use <laughs> or to start with? My recommendation would be Photoshop Illustrator and although we first got I've never tried it out and Procreate. Procreate 
Procreate is unfortunately only available for iOS devices, so iPad or iPhone. Photoshop, Illustrator and Co. are pretty expensive, <laughs> really expensive. I'm going to show you some alternatives. I've tried them out and yeah, let's see what I have to say about these programs. Okay, the first one I've tried was GIMP, which is a computer software and very similar to Photoshop since it's also a photo editing program. Personally, I wouldn't recommend it because I had a really tough time finding the tools and the settings. Also, the pressure of my stylus pen didn't work well. So if I had to choose some points for it, I would say 5, no more 4 out of 10. And I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. The second program I've tried is Krita, which I found through uh, research on Google. And I have to say, I'm really surprised by this program. The interface and the layout is really easy to understand. And you have so much choice in brushes and pencils and colors. And it's very similar to yeah Photoshop, but you can't edit photos with it. But since we are looking for alternatives for drawing softwares, this is definitely recommended by myself for beginners. I would give it an 8, maybe even a 9 out of 10. The first app I've tried for Android and iOS devices is Infinite Painter and I have to say I'm really surprised because it's almost like Procreate. Only the interface is a little bit different and where you find the tools but the quantity of brushes you have, the commands are the same, the double tap etc. I'm really amazed by this program and I would definitely recommend it. If I hadn't an iPad I would definitely use Infinite Painter. Last but not least is Concepts, which is also an app for Android and iOS devices. The part I like the most of this app is the color palette or the colors you can choose from. Is the Copics or Copic color palette, the brushes, the markers you can buy from the Japanese brand. And it's so cool, you have all the Copics available. Yeah, I'm a Copic freak. Um, the tools are also pretty cool, all the brushes you can choose from, the sizes, the settings. It's less similar to Procreate, but it's also a pretty good program. You have also the possibility to get a pro version to pay for it. The free one is definitely good for beginners. So I would give it a 7 out of 10. Okay, let's rate the programs. Let's start with the computer software. My personal favorite is Krita because you have so many brushes, tools, it's easy to understand, easy for the beginning, I would say. So if you're starting out with a computer and a graphic tablet, use Krita. I put the link in the description box for all the application and softwares, but this one is definitely my favorite. Number two is GIMP, also a computer software. I would recommend it if you're searching for a photo editing program, an alternative to Photoshop, but I wouldn't recommend it for drawing and illustrations because A, the interface and the layout of the program is very complex and it's difficult to see and find the tools you need and the brushes are very limited. You can create your own brushes but I think at the beginning you don't know how to create brushes so I wouldn't recommend it if you're only searching for a program which is based on drawing and illustrations. Okay now let's look at the apps for Android and iOS devices. My personal favorite is Infinite Painter but what I didn't know when I tested the program is you have only a seven days trial. After that you have to purchase the app for using still the layers and the tools etc. You can still draw on it but you have to purchase it if you want to use the layers options, the tools, the transform tools etc. So this is a little minus for me but if you're searching for an alternative to Procreate I think it costs 10 dollars 11 euros. So if you have a little bit of budget I would definitely go with Infinite Painter. Last but not least, Concepts, an app for Android and iOS devices. 
A thing I didn't know at the beginning was it's similar to Illustrator, so all the illustrations are vectors. What I didn't like about this app was the limited selection of brushes. You have to purchase other brushes to have a variety. Um, but the cool thing about this app is the color palette, yes, because it's based on Copic. But I would definitely go with Infinite Painter, even though you have to pay $10, but Infinite Painter is my personal favorite. Okay, things I wish I have known before I start with digital art. Number one definitely would be um, that it's not easy. <laughs> I thought it's so easy, instead no. It's the contrary, it depends what, I, what you're doing, if you are doing these flat images, like you see everywhere on TikTok, yeah. But if you want to make an illustration that is more sophisticated with backgrounds, etc, etc, you can get to your limit. And that's a thing I wish I had known before I started with digital art. As I said at the beginning, it's a whole new medium. You can, If you don't know how to draw the basics, if you don't know how to draw backgrounds on paper, you won't know it with digital art. <laughs> Number two is the bad stigma of digital art. I always admired digital artists because one thing is paint on a canvas. It's, it's cool, but I was always saying or thinking digitally, you have so many options, so many options and brushes and how do you do that? It's, but, the most part of the internet think that digital art is not real art, which is not true. If you're seeing pictures like these or like these, you can say to me that's not art. The reputation of digital art is not so good, which reflects automatically to yourself, to your art, no? When you're a digital artist, you don't see yourself sometime as an artist. Yeah, not like Da Vinci who was painting and, and drawing traditionally, etc, etc, for the rest of the history. When you go to the Louvre and you see the Mona Lisa, etc. Digital art is, yeah, you do it once and you can replicate it. I think that's the point why it has a bad reputation and yeah, unfortunately it's like that. The last point is, digital art can be overwhelming. With all the brushes, all the possibilities you have, it's overwhelming. At the beginning I didn't even know what to draw or what to paint, because you can paint or draw, you can do whatever you want. I arrived to a point where I had a creative blog, an art blog, because, you saw, because I saw people doing that and that and that with an iPad or with a computer. And I thought, how did they do that? Oh my god! <laughs> so these are the things I wish I would have known before I started with digital art. It's not that I don't want you to start with digital art, it's just I want you <laughs> to be aware of those things, especially the comparison game. It's just a little reminder that it's not all roses and unicorns and rainbows. Okay, some last thoughts be before my battery dies. <laughs> the digital art world is such a beautiful and huge world at the end. You're going to learn so many things like color profiles, what is RGB color, what are RGB colors, CYMK colors, and the resolution, etc, etc. I just want to say you don't let you get down if it's too much because it's really much to learn but it's also when you're going to learn oil painting you you will learn so much and you have to practice and put the work in it but in my opinion it's such a cool thing to know to do and to create <laughs> visually I don't know if it made sense I hope I encouraged you to start with digital art and that you enjoy this video and that you're taking my advices, especially comparison thing. Don't compare yourself to others. I have to tattoo it on my forehead. I see myself in the mirror. 
and yeah thank you so much for watching my video if you enjoyed it like it or consider subscribing to my channel